Good morning, everyone. Um, We're glad to have everyone on the line this morning. God is good and God is faithful. Uh, Today, our message is called Fighting to Keep the Faith. Fighting to Keep the Faith. Now, why the fight of faith and how do we fight? What is so special about faith? Well, the thing that's special about our faith is that we need faith in order to live. The Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith. It says we walk by faith and not by sight. Our faith is so very, very important. And in Romans ten seventeen, it says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this is how faith come. It's come. It comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know what? Sometimes, now I know I used to do this years, years ago. Sometimes people pray for faith. I mean, they pray that God would give them more faith. But really, the Bible says it tells us how faith cometh. So it cometh by the word of God. And now over in First Timothy 6 and 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So we are to fight the good fight of faith. See, our faith is very, very important. Many times things in trials or tribulation, things come against us. It's really coming against your faith. For over in in James in uh, chapter 1, In uh, verse 2, it says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. It puts patience to work. Now, did you note it said the trying of your faith? So it's an attack against your faith. Our faith is so very important. But glory be to God. Thank God. The scripture tells us over in Ephesians 6, in uh, over Ephesians chapter 6, and I believe it's around verse uh, 4, 3 or 4 there, it says, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. So we continue to stand. We stand on God's word. Glory be to God. And so we continue to fight the good fight of faith. And by the grace of God. Now, it's very interesting. Over in um, Luke uh, chapter 22, verse 31 through 32, this is Jesus. He's speaking. He's speaking to, uh, he's speaking concerning to Peter. He said, and the Lord said unto Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now, did you know he said, I prayed for you that your faith fail not? He didn't say, Peter, I pray that you be strong. I just pray that you would endure. I pray that you'd overcome. No, he said, I pray that your faith fail not. See, our faith is very, very important. Amen, because the Bible says we need faith in order to please God. Amen. And so our faith is very important. Now, look at this also, and I just, this is kind of like a side thought here. But but notice, uh, it really says, uh, he said, Satan has desired to have you. It's really saying that Satan requested to have you. That's what it's saying. He, Satan has requested to have you, Peter. But he said, I prayed for you that your faith be or not. Now, based on this verse of Scripture, many people believe that before the devil can do anything, uh, he has to get permission from God. Now, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I do not believe that's true. I do not believe that the devil will go to the Lord Jesus Christ and request permission to attack you or put something on you. No, the devil will come after you, amen, because you are a child of God, because you are living for God, and he'll try to hinder you. But see, God, God has told us to do something about the devil. Authority has been given unto the body of Christ. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. The Bible also says, give him no place. Amen. Now, 
the reason why, now look at this. Now, and I know people think about Job, and, and the devil uh, told God, said, uh, you got a hedge around him. I can't get to it. And, and, but now, look, you have to look at this. There's four things you, you need to look at. Yeah, who's doing the speaking? Uh, who, what are they speaking about? Who are they speaking to? And at what time is it being spoken? Now, we know Jesus is doing the speaking, and he's speaking to Peter, and no doubt the other disciples was hearing what was going on and whoever else was there. And he was talking about how Satan uh, desired to have him. Now, this is key. At what time was he speaking this? Well, he was speaking this before he died. He was speaking this before the devil was defeated. This is so very, very important. See, after Jesus uh, died in his victory over sin and death, his victory over the devil, everything changed. Amen. Amen. Um, he said in, in Colossians 2.15, he says, in having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Through the cross, he destroyed the devil. Amen. The works of the devil. Scripture says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And so the devil has been defeated. The devil do not go to God for permission to attack his children. Amen. The devil was defeated. Jesus, he defeated the devil for you and I. So why would he give the enemy permission to come against his children? No, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And so, but again, all of this happened before uh, before Jesus had died. Remember he said uh, he rose from the dead, and he said all power or authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Just by he saying that it's been given unto me, it infers that he didn't have it before. Come on now. Remember that God had given dominion to Adam in this world, but Adam turned it over to the, to, to Satan. So Jesus gained back what was lost in the fall. Now, um, I'm going to share this verse of scripture over here in Mark, I mean Luke, chapter chapter 4, and I have 15 through 20. Now, now listen, uh, our faith is key. Our faith is very important. It says, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when the when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. See, the devil, he come to take the word and said, and these are they, uh, this is the parable of the sword that soweth the seed, which is the word of God. And these are they, likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves and so endure, but for a time. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Did you notice what it says? Uh, why does persecution and affliction, troubles, try, it arises immediately for the word's sake? Amen. Now, don't, don't misunderstand me. Many things we bring on ourselves. But I'm telling you, many things come for the sake of the word, persecution, to, to try to convince you it's not working. It does, it does not work, but the devil is a liar. Glory be to God. Our faith is key. Our faith is important. See, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the devil can steal, if he can steal the word of God out of our hearts or away from us, amen, it can hinder your faith. It can hinder your walk with God. That's why the scripture teaches that it's so very important for us to renew, renew our mind over in Romans 12, uh, 1 and 2. Our mind should, uh, we as Christians, as believers, it should be a constant part of our life, a lifestyle in reading God's word. Amen. Now, uh, it, it, and then it goes on to say, then these are they which are sown among thorns, such as here, 
the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in. Choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Now, did you, you notice that how everything is focused on the word? Everything is focused on the word. I mean, to choke the word, to this, to take the word out of, our, out of our heart. But glory be to God. This, another thing we can see in this is that how powerful the God's word is. Amen. It's so powerful. And said, in these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, and some sixty, and some a hundred. I always found it very interesting. Every, everyone did not bring forth the same amount of fruit. Did you see that? <laughs> People bring forth different different levels of fruit. Amen. Notice it says some sixty and some it says uh bring forth fruit, some thirty fold, sixty and some a hundred. Well why is it that some brought forth more fruit than than others? Well I think as uh the, the context of what we've been uh sharing here, it is in the word of God. Some people give themselves more to the word of God than others. Come on now. See, we are we are the ones that's in charge of how much fruit that we will bring forth. We are the ones that has a responsibility on how much come forth out of our life. It's pretty obvious. You you all of us can say that you met Christians and some some Christians walk more in love than others. Glory to God. Oh, my goodness, that 10 minutes goes so fast. Okay, so we just thank God for the precious written word of God. God is faithful. Amen. So with the fight, the good fight of faith, hold fast to your faith. Your faith is important. Glory be to God. You know what, saints of God, our faith is is greater than what we realize. And, and, and now listen, God has dealt to each one of us the measure of faith. Glory to God. 